a lot of water, 400 liters, not gallons, 400 liters at a sitting. And, you know, I, I used to live, my wife and I, for, uh, on the mission field for three and a half years, we lived with no running water, no electricity, unless I ran to get the water, but uh, no electricity or anything, no vehicle. Ten years without a telephone, you know, we were out in the sticks, uh, planting churches, preaching the gospel, and we had a, I had a well, I had a well, and I had a 20-liter bucket. That's heavy. I always said, throw that bucket down there, bloop, and pull it out. And then I, I made myself a, 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 a shower with a bathroom, and I built a little bathroom, and I put a, a, a container, a reservoir, on the roof. And so I had to climb up this ladder with this 20-liter bucket, and whoosh, pour it in it, go back down, and woof, whoosh, 20 liters. That reservoir was 700 liters. How many trips did I have to make? To fill that thing up. And then I had a, uh, 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 I got a little wood burning uh, 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 boiler that I, I made so I could be able to take hot showers because we were out in the mountains and it'd get cold out there. And then, uh, and so I even rigged up a flush toilet <laughs> because most people just had three rooms and a path, you know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And so, so I rigged up a flush toilet and everything, but every once in a while the grit from that, uh, from that well would get in there and would. And the, and the plunger wouldn't sit firmly. And so in one night, all that water would come out. Next morning, I'd go out to take a shower. And, and I'd take a shower. And I'd have soap on me. And then all of a sudden, all the water would be gone because it, the toilet had drained. <laughs> and I didn't even have water enough to get the soap out of my rag, you know. <laughs> so I just put the clothes on over the soap and dry, soap would dry up. <laughs> I, it was more than one occasion, I come out with soap all up in the hair, and my wife said, you smell so good, be quiet. I got to go out there and <laughs> fill up that thing again and wait until the water heats up. You know, I know what it's like, you know, to live where you got to work for your water. It's valuable. It's costly. You know, I, man, I got some tales to tell you about, uh, you know, living out there where you got to. You remember when Jesus said, he that is clean need not but to wash but his feet? Well, you see, because they didn't have indoor bathrooms, you know, they'd go out to the well or down to the river and they'd take a bath and then they'd have to walk back home. You know, you got sandals on, you know, so you get to the house, you clean, but you just feet, your feet are dirty now. So like Jesus is talking about, you know, he, I cleanse you, but walking in this world, you know, that dust of the world sticks to your feet. He has to clean your feet. Well, you, you're with me. Uh, boy, I got... you. you you have a second to hear just a couple little missionary stories? Uh, well, before I built my little bathroom up, we'd have to, I had a little, like a little hole I had dug in the, in the ground. And, you know, I'd heat some water, and I had a little a lard can, so we'd have to heat the water up there, and then I'd have to, I had a little half a coconut, and I'd throw the water on me and soap down and stuff like that. Now, now this is what I did after studying for years and everything like that. I'm an academic. I've been a, a university professor. We left everything to preach the gospel out there. And I'm, man, when I went to high school, I had to wear a three-piece suit to school. Vest and with a little emblem on it, you know, with a tie. Every day, every day. And here I am living out there, digging a hole in the ground with a campfire so I can bathe, you know, <laughs> to preach the gospel. And so, and, but it was cold out there. I built myself a little log cabin, and, and I built it with green wood, and when the wood dried up, it had gaps between, the <laughs> between each board about that big, and the wind would blow through and blow our candles out and stuff like that at night. It would get cold, and it rained, and so we just, it, it roof, the water would come through so many spaces in the walls and the roof that we just put a big sheet of plastic over the bed because, you know, there's no, no sense in putting buckets out. I'd get up in the night, slosh, 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 slosh. Well, the bathroom come back, slosh, 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 and get back in bed. You know, it's just stuff that we've been through. Anyway, one night, I, you know, it was so cold, and I'd have to pray in tongues before I'd, I'd put that water on me, because as soon as I put that water on me, this freezing air would come through, and I'd look like a plucked chicken. And, uh, uh, so I bathed real quick, and, you know, without my glasses, you know, I need my glasses to see my dreams. And so without, <laughs> without my glasses... I came back in, and we got these candles up there, and so I, I go into the bedroom, I, I showered, and I grab the right guard, shh, shh, and I feel it running, and I, I'm like, what the heck is this? Because it's too runny, and I get back to the, next to the candle, rain! You know, I put, and 
This just ain't right. I got to go back out and shower. <laughs> Stuff. Oh, I could tell you some more funny uh, story. But anyway, water in those places and developing, or especially in the biblical days, and they're going to take this water out, this desert, and just pour it out to the Lord? What are they saying? What does that mean? That which is my life, like we, that which is most important, that which is most costly to us. Lord, we give that to you. Amen? Take a look at this, 2 Samuel 14, 14. 2 Samuel 14, 14. Who has that right quick here? Well, we must de- needs die, or surely we shall all die. Before we Go ahead. Okay, and they are, are as water spent on the ground. We've been poured out on the ground. Which cannot be gathered, up, Which again. Cannot be gathered up again. Neither will God respect any God has no respect for any person. <clears throat> and he ha- makes a way. That he will never... Leave or be far from those who have been disenfranchised. I'm translating that, but that's actually what he's saying. If you feel like you've been abandoned, he has not abandoned you. (laughs) Okay, our life is like water poured out on the earth. Hey, if you're going to do this thing for Jesus, do it. You can't give your life to Christ like a yo-yo, you know. You know, I give my life to you. Nope. No, I haven't. <laughs> we just whoop. You know, the yo-yo is the most egotistical toy on the, on the face of the earth. How, two people can't play with a yo-yo. <laughs> the, the Spanish word for me or I is yo. <laughs> yo, y yo, y yo, <laughs> yo. It's me. Just for me. But many times... We give our lives to God with reservation. When I think it's convenient, where I think it's good, when it's good for me, but when we give our life to Christ, it must be so without reserve, just as water poured out on the ground. Once it's there, it's there. How how many of you know you can't get it back? You've taken that step. It's poured out to Christ. It's poured out on him. But that thing about being poured out. Hey, do you remember David and his 30 valiant men? How many of you know about David and his 30 valiant men? Oh, I love that. I mean, how many of you know that martial arts started in the Middle East and not in Asia? You know what? I I share this all over the world, and, and you're the fourth person out of all the people I know that has, has, uh, knows that. M- martial arts did not start in Asia. It didn't start in China. It didn't start. It started in the Middle East. And you can find evidence of that in the Bible with David 30 men. Think about this. The Philistines had conquered Israel. They're, and they took away all their weapons. And only Saul and Jonathan had weapons, right? You remember that? How many of you remember that? Only Saul and Jonathan had rep- weapons. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, take my sword. I'm going to handle this. And they see a garrison of Philistines, probably about three or 400 Philistines. And they said, let's go get them. Two of them. Let's go get them. And so they come up, hey, Philistines, you uncircumcised heathen. And they said, hey, let, there's some Jews. Let's go get them. And so uh, Jonathan, these guys are up on a hill, which tactically in warfare is the advantage. These guys have swords. They have shields. They have spears. And Jonathan comes and says, come on. So I'll take you on. And so they come after Jonathan, and Jonathan's going uphill, and it says he's killing them with his bare hands. And his armor bearer, what it says in the Hebrew, it says he's going by making sure they were dead with his sword. 
what the heck is he doing to these guys? They're coming at him with swords and shields and armor and spears, and Jonathan is killing them with no weapons in his hands. The dude is bad. <laughs> he is redefining the word bad. <laughs> He's Navy SEAL, Green Beret, Army Rangers, all rolled up in one. And David's 30 valiant men were like this. One guy with one sword or one spear killed 800 men. You got to imagine what kind of movement was this guy doing? Yeah, I love these modern movies where they show these martial arts, these graceful moves and stuff, and they're just taking people out. Well, that basically is what was going on. This guy's just cutting through these troops like a hot knife through butter, taking them out. Well, David said one time, he says, um, man, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I grew up in, Be in Bethlehem. Yeah, yeah. He says, there's a well by the gate in Bethlehem. The water in that well, man, that water is incredible. Fresh. It's, it's nice and cool, man. It's, it's got a flavor. Man, I love that water, but I miss it. And the Philistines, those heathen, they're, in, they are, they're occupying Bethlehem now. And three of his valiant men said, you heard the man. He wants a drink of water from that well. So three of them go out to Bethlehem and start clocking Philistines. The truth is, two of them had to fight because one of them had to get the water out of the well. While the other two are taking on the entire Philistine army that's posted there. These guys are bad, man. <laughs> These guys are taking them out. And they come back, you know, like you have to think about it. They came back covered in blood, you know, because we don't think about it. The movies don't tell you because... When they're taking people out with swords, you got all kinds of arterial spray. you got all kinds of stuff like that. These guys come back covered in blood, and they say, David. They show him, they give him a, a pitcher of water, and he says, what's this? He says, you said you wanted some water from that well. You guys went to Bethlehem, and you got water, and he, he sees the blood all over these guys, and he says, whoa, okay. You did this? He says, you wanted water, here it is. And David says, 